Hey, what is up, everybody? Chris Souders, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again this afternoon. I am happy that you all have joined us uh, this afternoon. Um, it is Tackle Talk Tuesday time. Um, hopefully, you all are able to hear me good and able to uh, see everything great. Um, once again, the the old computer has uh, given me fits. I don't know what it is, but I need somebody that is very te uh, technical savvy to figure it out but anyway um it didn't show up so hopefully it showed up on you all's end that i was going live uh, 7 p.m like i normally do and it does look like some of you guys are joining in so for everybody that this is your first time i want to thank you guys for joining us here at slender cat outdoors i uh, got two uh, young ladies that wanted a little shout out this evening and I want to make sure to get them recognized uh, right off the bat. Uh, Kaylee and Riley, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoy the show this evening. And hope you uh, two young ladies have had a great and wonderful day uh, with your father and your mother and your parents. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. And thank you, thank you guys for tuning in this evening. If you're watching, make sure to give a thumbs up. Uh, for everybody that is just now tuning in, um, if you're new to the show, this is Tackle Talk Tuesdays, where we're taking information, uh, doing live shows, so I so that I can interact with you guys a little bit um, as the channel grows and as I grow. Uh, I want to say technology-wise, um, I want to be able to, you know, do this in a better way to get a better um, interaction with you guys as we as we go through this, but. As always, make sure you're leaving in the comments uh, what you guys want to see. Um, if you guys want to see something special or something in particular about a certain product, a, a certain uh, way of fishing, um, something that I use, make sure you're leaving those comments in the, and those questions in the comments. Um, as always, uh, we do a, a video viewer Friday. Um, now, last weekend, uh, we was actually on the water, so I wasn't able to get in a video viewer Friday uh, video out, but hopefully... Uh, hopefully we'll be able to this time around uh, last weekend the weather didn't permit as far as uh, filming goes but hopefully this weekend goes and so last weekend uh, we started and i'm just going to dive right right back into where we kind of cut off uh, last weekend for anybody that was watching uh, we started the tournament preparation or fishing trip pre uh, preparation uh, kind of segment of of things and last week we kind of just kind of recap uh, we covered a lot of information a lot of basic information and I don't want to say it's for beginner anglers but maybe uh, anglers that um, just needed a boost of confidence or a little bit of guidance on how to get started in tournament fishing or um, how to attack a new body of water that they've never been to um, so just to kind of give a little bit of recap of what we covered uh, we covered, you know, how to pick a tournament or a club, you know, how to find them, where to find them, um, how to pick a body of water that you might want to fish, uh, whether it be new, uh, big, small, you know, something like that. Gave you guys some information on how to get a hold of the tournament directors, uh, people in the area that maybe fish the new body of water that you wanted to fish, uh, tournament information. Uh, you know, we covered a lot of basic information as far as, you know, fishing laws, um, you know, addresses, how to take notes, you know, what, what we should be putting in those notes, um, you know, what we should get and trust off of social media and the internet as far as our information goes, um, how to start our fishing notes, uh, you know, our weather, our water conditions, uh, uh, things of that matter, um, you know, and when to plan, you know, uh, when to plan a turn or a decide to go to a tournament or a body of water uh, depending on the time of year that it might be uh, we've covered a lot of that information so if this if you missed last week uh, go back to that one after you get done watching tonight's show and uh, catch yourself up a lot of good information um, not just uh, from me but in the chat as well and as always if you guys have comments you know on what uh, you know to further any information that I give to anybody that's watching this, uh, maybe you may be an advanced angler yourself or even not an, a non 
uh, advanced angler or beginner angler can have great information to share even to myself okay so don't uh, discredit that information either um, so uh, one of the questions from last week was a, a good weather app or a good uh, you know what I use for to keep you know keep good weather patterns or you know what I look at I guess the weather app that I look at I just use the uh, National uh, Weather Service app that I downloaded onto my phone. Um, it gives good solid information as far as uh, the wind, what the weather's going to be uh, several days out. Uh, you know, lets me plan and take notes um, on that. Now, with that being said, you know what I write down in my notes is what it actually is, but I also write down in my notes what. Uh, you know what it was supposed to be okay so for instance if the wind you know because wind plays a huge factor in fishing if the wind was supposed to be four or five or six seven miles an hour and it actually turned out to be you know 10 or 12 miles an hour then that is something that I will want to put in my notes to be able to compare so the next day if if it says it's gonna be four again but we're not having no major weather change it's going to be about the same then i can almost i can almost uh, know that my wind is going to be you know 10 or 12 mile an hour from a certain direction okay now <clears throat> so to kind of uh hopefully that clarified uh, that that question for you clarence about you know what app i used and why i used it so to jump right back into the night, kind of where we ended last week. Uh, you know, last week we was we was talking about taking our fishing notes and getting as much information as we possibly could from, you know, all the social media, Navionics, uh, Google Earth, Bing, stuff like that. So we've kind of got a um, an idea of what's going on out there, you know, where we're going to be, uh, the places we're going to be staying, uh, the places that uh, the ramps we're going to be using, uh, we know the water uh, in a roundabout way. Uh, I feel I I feel like that if you study the map enough between Google and Navionics, by the time you get there, you will have you will almost feel like you have been on that water before. You may never have been on that water, but you will feel as if you had. Okay. So the next thing is that we're gonna we're gonna be doing or gonna be covering is uh, you know what do we do? How do we you know, what do we take? Um, how do we know what to take? Well, you're never going to know exactly what to take. And you, you can never, um, a lot of times I will say less is more. Uh, yeah, Greg. Uh, we, so, uh, Greg is on here. Um, another gentleman by the name of Bob, he went with me. Uh, we, we went on a fishing trip this weekend. And quick story, we did not, you know, I've been so busy. Uh, they've been busy. This was a kind of like, I don't want to say a last minute trip, but it wasn't, you know, uh, planned out greatly, I guess you could say. We did not have a checklist and it showed. We forgot rod holders. We forgot rods. We forgot boots. Uh, we forgot, uh, you name it, we forgot it. Okay. And it, you know, it was a good laugh. Good laugh. Good thing it wasn't a tournament. Good thing it was just a, uh, just a fishing trip. We had a great time. Um, unfortunately, I wanted to get some good video down while we was there, but unfortunately, we didn't. But, but anyway, you know, you know, a lot of times I want to say less is more whenever it comes to what we're taking uh, on a fishing trip. But in this instance, if you don't have it, you can't try it. If you don't have it and you need it, uh, well, you either got to go buy it or uh, you got to try to find somebody that's willing to let you have it and use it, you know, and that, and that can be challenging sometimes. So I try to take a lot of different stuff, but maybe not a, a lot of one thing, if that makes sense. Okay. And, you know, a good way to do that and something that I usually do on a, on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, like the caption in the vid, in the picture says, you know, our mothers, our wives do it all the time, grocery shopping, 
And yeah, you know, they, they're absolutely right. I hate to admit it, but they're right. Take the two or three minutes it takes to make a, you know, a checklist. And as you can see, I got, uh, you know, I got one for, that's for boat, trailer, and truck. And then this one is for um, fishing equipment, okay? So, you know, it, it doesn't take no, no time to uh, absolutely, you know, make yourself a good checklist and, you know, it's going to help out dramatically uh, on what you, uh, you know, knowing that you have everything there that you could possibly have, okay? And, and it's super simple. I don't know why I didn't do it last time, but it happens. But, you know, so I'm going to go through like a checklist that I kind of, I put out for myself. And now this is going to be different uh, for most, you know, depending on where you're going. will depend on what you want to add to it, what you want to take away from it. Um, but at home, this is, these are checklists. And we also will have a checklist once we get there and we you know, get on the water and we start looking around, some things we want to check off uh, throughout the time that we're fishing. But at home, this is stuff that's going to ensure us uh, more fishing time there instead of time running around trying to find an anchor, you know, because you lose one. You snag it up and who knows what, but it's gone. So the boat and truck, you want to make sure the batteries are uh, our charge, all the terminals, all that small little stuff that uh, you know takes up time while you're while you're out there on the water. You know, if you got a dead battery, you can't fish once you get there. You know, you're gonna have to charge things up. So, making sure all that stuff is charged up, make sure all your terminals are tight, everything has oil, grease, uh, all your grease fittings are greased up, your wheel bearings are lubed, everything's tight. Uh, little things like that, even air in your tires uh, can make you know, make a big difference, you know, uh, roll, rolling down the river or rolling down the highway on half flat trailer tires, you know, eventually something's going to happen to those. So make sure that you're, you're checking that stuff before you ever leave. And that's going to save, you know, yourself from being stranded on the side of the highway with semis running by you, you know, 80 mile an hour. Uh, you know, straps in good condition and tight. I know that sounds little, I know these things sound simple, uh, make sure your props tight uh, all your pumps you know your if you're going to a tournament uh, make sure your live well is up to par make sure all your pumps and your aeration system all that stuff is working before you get there you, there's nothing worse than putting a big fish in a live well hitting your pumps and finding out they don't work that's the worst time in the world to find out that your pumps don't work now if they work before you left your house and you got out there and something happened, that's different. But make sure we're checking that stuff beforehand. Uh, all your legal safety stuff and paperwork, and not just for not just for the state that you live in, but where you're gonna be. Make sure that goes into the fishing laws and boating laws and things of that nature. Uh, you know, on you know, what you need in your boat. Um, some places, allow light strips on on boats uh, some states but some states make sure that you have your navigation uh, front lights with sticking up on the pole so that it's up higher depending on where you're at will make you know will depend on whether you get a ticket or whether you know nothing happens um, something I didn't know uh, until we was in Mississippi or Memphis this year for the Mississippi River monsters was a I wear a uh, self-deploying or you know air automatic deploy uh, life jacket you know it's comfortable it's lightweight but it is not considered a, a PDF or PFD until you actually have it on if uh, if you have a, a regular uh, life jacket in your boat that's fine you don't have to have it on but if you have a you know, automatic deploy life jacket in your boat, it is not considered a life jacket unless you have it on. Okay, so so make sure little things like that can make a difference on whether you get a ticket, you know. And and little things like that will make a difference on, you know, whether you get pulled off the water because you didn't have a throwable, um, you know, life preserver. 
and they tell you, hey, we're going to follow you back to the ramp and you have to go get yourself a throwable before you can get back on the water. That's wasted time that we could have prevented and we could have been you know, pre-fishing, looking for fish or just fun fishing. Okay, So little things like this really make a difference. Um, spare tools, spare jacks, uh, extra plugs. Uh, you know, Harley Neal, if you're on here, this one is for you and Brent and Renee King. Uh, if you guys are watching, make sure you put your plug in. Make sure you put a plug in. Um, extra spare tools and you know jacks and things like that. That's going to make you know make sure you have everything you need to change a tire. Uh, you're going to blow a tire. You're going to get a flat. It's going to happen. Um, you know, take stuff to where you can, you can air it up, you know, little small little 12 volt compressors. Uh, you know, you can put a plug in, um, fix a flat, you know, little things like that, that don't take up much room. Um, but whenever it comes to, you know, making the difference, you know, on, on whether you're getting stuck out there, you got to wait for AAA or a tow truck, or you can just fix it and go on it saves you a lot of time, a lot of time. Now, now that's, and that's a list that, uh, that you guys can, you know, add to or take away from. Um, it's pretty simple. It's, uh, and that, and that's gonna, that's kind of something I basically do every time, you know, I, I go to leave for, for a trip. Uh, now I actually done this list before last weekend. I did not do this list <laughs> and it showed okay now this is like uh, fishing equipment okay uh, make sure you got all your licenses uh, depending on where you're gonna be will depend on you know you may you may uh, only have to have one license but you may be fishing right on the border of two different states and you have to have you know two different licenses to be able to fish and and look wherever you want to be and that is something by knowing how much water you know in that tournament or in that area that you want to fish uh, is going to automatically you know once you're doing that research you're going to be able to know hey I need I need two different licenses to be able to cover all the water uh, that I want to fish uh, during this or look at during this tournament uh, as silly as this sounds rod and reels now it's just not rod and reels uh, we want to look at uh, this is where the species of fish come into play Okay. Uh, for instance, um, go, whenever the Cabela's tournaments were going to Quincy, Illinois, uh, the first time I ever went to Quincy, Illinois, uh, everybody, ever, all the information that I could find was that there was very few blue cats, very few flatheads, um, but a lot of channel cats. Well, I, you know, when you're packing rods, you want to make sure that you're packing. Uh, enough for what you the main species you're going to catch or go after but also in case you do find that you know diamond in the rough of an area that's holding bigger fish like blues or, or flatheads where you're going to need those other uh, maybe a heavier action rod or a bumping rod you know different technique uh, that you might be able to use in those areas so make sure you have a good variety of that rod and reels okay not just one um, there's nothing worse than getting out there and being able to find out that you could have uh, caught those fish drifting or, or back bouncing and all you have is, you know, uh, anchor rods, okay? Uh, dip nets, bait nets, cast nets, uh, you know, those all make a huge, <clears throat> you know, advantage on, you know, catching bait. Uh, you know, a different variety. You know, you don't want to just take one net. You want to take uh, two nets that you normally use. Um, you know, maybe a couple smaller nets. Now, you should already know your legal size of net out there, uh, but you want to make sure if, even if you can throw a 10 footer out there, that you might come up upon a, to a place like a sewer discharge or um, right around a lock and dam where it's real rocky. Uh, it's just a small area, real snaggy and you don't want to throw a big net because you know you're going to lose it, you can throw a small net that is cheaper, still catch the bait, and not have to worry about if you snag it up and rip it up, okay? 
So having a good variety of that stuff makes a difference too. And, and also a good variety of, of bait rods. Uh, you know, take a couple, even though you don't, you, know, you may think, hey, I'm gonna be able to catch all my bait with a, a cast net. Uh, take a, a bait rod or two um, and put it in just in case, okay? And this is all, this is all stuff that you're taking down in case now the day of the tournament, you should have this stuff figured out and all this stuff can kind of be stowed away in a truck to give you more room on the boat, okay? Uh, catfish tackle, uh, the, your tackle, hooks, lines, sinkers, uh, swivels, all that stuff. Uh, this is a good time to go ahead and pre-tie that stuff now. Pre-tie rigs that you think you might use. Um, this is where you know your rig wraps come into play, your uh, you know, the worm bags uh, that you guys have seen me use, uh, both of those are great. I mean, you can you can make a ton of different rigs that you think you might be able to use, and and this is all time saving uh, information. Okay, the more time we can save now, uh, the better our chances are at finding a good place to fish or good fish or uh, you know having a good successful fishing trip. You know while we're there, uh, nothing you know. We don't want to be wasting time tying rigs uh, whenever we could be fishing. Uh, for instance, you know, I, I love to use Kentucky rigs, but there's a time and a place for them. And if I got Kentucky, uh, double hook Kentucky rigs on, and I notice that there's some big fish uh, underneath me, well, I don't want to waste time retying a bunch of rigs. Uh, I can just grab them out of the rig wrap box case and you know, cut the old one off, tie one up, and I'm back in business within just a minute or less than a minute. You know, that's how quick you can do this stuff by having different rigs, uh, you know, tied up, whether it be bumping rigs, dragging, uh, you know, anchor rigs, double hook rigs, uh, double hook, you know, for big pieces of bait, you know, all that. You want to have all those tied up and various lengths and various, uh, you know, amounts, okay? Because you never know, you could be uh, dragging baits today and want to anchor tomorrow or want to uh, you know drift tomorrow so so make sure that that is done and that goes for bait fishing stuff as well um, you know have various different rigs tied up sabikis uh, curly tails spoons you know all that stuff and once again this is a good place to store it in your rig wraps and in your in your worm cases uh, sinkers um, now sinkers uh, you know, I carry a lot of sinkers, a lot of heavy sinkers with me, but I want to have different sizes. You know, I want to carry everything from like a, a, a two or a one and a half, like a one and a half dragon weight all the way up to a 10 or, or 12 ounce, you know, cannonball or flat disc style sinker, depending on, you never know what you're going to run into whenever you come to a new area or a new place to fish. Now that doesn't mean take a hundred of each one, but you want to make sure that you have uh, you know, several of each one just in case, you know, you want to change the way you fish. Um, special fishing tackle, you know, for me, I love to use planter boards, uh, dragging, drifting, you know, different things. So that's a specialty uh, fishing piece of equipment that I want to take. Now, if, if I'm going to a place and I don't think I'm going to use them, then, you know, I may just take a few. But if I know I'm going to take, you know, if I'm going to a place that I'm going to use a bunch of them, then I'm going to take uh, everything that I need and some, okay? And then just, you know, everything else is like your coolers, your bait tank, um, all your bait tank material. Another good time-saving piece of advice that I can give you is, you know, if you're going to have a, a bait tank, have everything measured out. Um, you know, your salt, you know, we don't, we don't want to have to take a 40 pound bag of salt with us. Uh, get you some Tupperware, you know, jugs or coffee cans or uh, just, you know, something that you can put whatever amount the salt that you need in it, put it in there, seal it up. That way, whenever you need to switch the water out or you're going to put fresh water in, you can treat it. You just grab one of those containers, you know exactly how much is in it, dump it in and go. You don't have to sit there and measure and you don't have to fool with a 40 pound bag of salt. Okay, so to answer the question that is on the video uh, thumbnail picture, yes, yes, 
our wives are right, our mothers were right, if we would just stop being big-headed and think that we can remember everything and just make a list, it will save us a lot of heartache and a lot of stress. Uh, whenever we're going down the road and we realize, and you get that, oh, no moment, you know, I forgot rods. I mean, Greg, when you talk to, you know, who let him know that I mentioned him on this video. Now, the very last thing, this is kind of like the last thing. This is, you're packing up. Uh, you've been looking at the at Google Earth. You've been looking at a lot of different things um, on social media is you want to have a, an, a plan of attack, okay? You want to have an idea of what you're going to do once you get down there. Um, you want to have a... Now, this is not a guarantee. You know, some things are going to change, okay? But you want to have some idea of where we're going, what we're going to do when we get there, and, you know, as things change, you know, what we're going to be doing. So, once again, this is for, this is a plan of attack that I actually wrote out um, probably two years ago. This is a plan of attack from two years ago, and I, I, and I know it kind of seems silly to make a plan of attack, but it, it will help you stay focused on, you know, what, what you're doing and where you need to be and, and concentrate on what you need to concentrate on with everything else. Uh, you know, as things change and they will, you know, you can make good, quick, crisp decisions on what you need to be doing. But for instance, this is the plan of attack that I actually wrote out for Willow Lake a couple years ago. It says, I'll be leaving on Tuesday night after work, driving straight to Gunnersville Dam. Wednesday morning, number one thing, find bait. If there's any time left in the day, wherever we end up, we're going to start fishing there and start looking for fish. And then it goes into, you know, what we're going to be doing Thursday and Friday, okay? And that just gives you an idea, you know, Thursday we're going to go, uh, we're going to a different section of wherever, uh, wherever we're at, you know, um, we're going to go to the complete opposite. And then Friday we're going to go back to wherever we found bait Friday morning, get fresh bait, and then continue our pre-fishing in that area, okay? So... That kind of, uh, I guess, is going to be the the end of the tournament fishing trip preparation time at home. Now, one thing I didn't cover uh, in detail was the Navionics, and and of course I told you guys why. Uh, I want there's so much information when it comes to uh, Navionics and how to use it, and you know when to use it and what to look for, how to break things down that you know we just could not cover it in this. Uh, so Michael Pence, uh, says who is using calling systems? Um, I do, uh, you know, calling systems are to me a really good, uh, a really good must have thing in your boat is to have good ones. Um, you know, that way, once you get those fish in there, they're in there to stay. You don't have to worry about them. Um, you catch a 10 pound fish, you look in there. And you, you know, you automatically go down, you grab an eight pound fish, uh, pull it out, put the 10 pound in and you're, and you're right on. You don't have to mess with the other fish. So, uh, you know, something else to, to keep in mind whenever you're doing that, uh, and this will kind of be something we can go over in the future more so, but whenever you catch fish, uh, you know, while you're waiting or, you know, you're getting ready to put him in the live well, go ahead and weigh it, go ahead and tag it. And go ahead and write that weight down and length. You do all those at one time, and then you can put that fish in there. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, you got uh, you got the length, you got the weight, uh, the weight. So you catch another fish, whether it be bigger or smaller, you can just pull them out, uh, let him loose, put the other one in. Okay, and those fish are not being uh, stressed or hurt or uh, taken in and out of that tank more so than what they need to be. Okay, once you put them in, they're done. So that is going to uh, wrap us up for tonight, um, this week's Tackle Talk Tuesday. Uh, make sure you leave it in the comments. Um, you know what you guys want to hear about, what you guys want to want some information about. It always helps me on, 
you know what the what information to give you guys. Uh, the weather is warming up and the fish are getting uh, fish are getting active, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to uh, get out on the water, do some of these shows live, and uh, give you guys some you know uh, fish catches in the middle of the week. Uh, ain't nothing better than than going after work and catching fish. So, so I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, if this is your first time joining the show, I want to say uh, thank you for joining. Hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope you come back. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. Share. And we will catch you next week on Tackle Talk Tuesday. Thanks.